Hey everyone, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, and today I have a very special interview for you. She was a quadrilateral stature lengthening patient who had her surgery performed at the International Center for Limb Lengthening at Sinai Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. Now, her experience is really unique because she had the surgery performed over 15 years ago, thus giving you a glimpse into what some of the long-term potential effects could be like after limb lengthening. So, without further ado, please enjoy the interview with Mariana. Hey Mariana, thanks so much for coming on to share your limb lengthening experience with everybody. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I tell you what, I'm uh, truly honored to be here and I uh, appreciate this. This is a really cool journey to uh, be able to share this experience with everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your story is so interesting because you had your surgery done in 2005, which was over 15 years ago, um, you know, at Sinai Hospital. So, if, well, uh, you know, welcome to the club. I'm a fellow Sinai Hospital patient. And um, you actually had both limb segments lengthened. The, you were a, you're a quadrilateral patient. Um, so I just want you to kind of take us back and give us some background on your journey. Um, so what was the main reason that you wanted to get limb lengthening surgery done? Um, it, for the most part, uh, it was it's kind of twofold. Um, just to kind of give you some background, mm -hmm. when I was born, um, they basically for about roughly 24 hours, they didn't even let me see my mother. Um, and so they kept me away from her and they immediately started running tests. Mm -hmm. Um, because of this, they kind of painted her a very gruesome picture, um, which looked as though I was going to either have some type of dwarfism or something like that. Um, and so they would paint all these really terrible drastic pictures, which I'll provide you with some photographs of what I looked like as a baby. Yeah. Um, but it scared her half to death. And when she finally did come around to, to see me, cause they had to knock her out. She started getting hysterical. Oh, wow. um, when I finally was brought to her, it looked like there was nothing wrong with me. Um, wow. And so over the years I went through a lot of testing and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, they would give me different credentials and say, well, she's going to have a cleft palate. And I didn't, or she's going to have trident fingers and I grow out of it. And so every time I was just proving people wrong left and right, that I just didn't have anything they said I was going to have. Um, what it turned out though, is that by the age of like 13, they determined that I had a form of pseudochondroplasia. Mm. Um, in layman's terms, what that basically means is that the humerus and the femur, the long bones and the arms and legs, mm -hmm. um, were not going to extend to the full amount that they should. It's like a one in a million shot. Wow. Nobody in my family had it. Oh um, God. so it was really unheard of and being Italian, you know, mm -hmm. you, you kind of determined to be more of a shorter breed, but, uh, but with that being said, that was just kind of unheard of. Mm -hmm. Um, so fully grown, I was going to be like four or five, but they mm -hmm. didn't know that at the time. I see. So it was kind of a bleak picture. Yeah. Um, but, uh, over the course of the years, just kind of going through it, it seemed very hopeless. Mm -hmm. Um, I, my case is kind of like a dinosaur case now. And the only reason I say that is because in the nineties there was, it was pre-internet. You know, there was no information. You couldn't go and, and watch an incredible, you know, subscription here on YouTube and, and talk to people that had, you know, the social media aspects that could talk to you and say, we've been there, we've done that. Right. Um, the 90s didn't have that. So for my parents, it was very hopeless. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I got picked on a lot at school. Mm -hmm. I would have, I was very self-conscious going into, you know, either a grocery store or the gallery, like, our mall here is called the gallery. I was going to reference it, but, um, you know, things like that. It was really difficult. You walk around and you have adults even, um, that were very ignorant in how they chose to use their words. Mm -hmm. They would say, you know, what's wrong with you or how tall are you? And I hated those questions. Right. Um, and so, you know, I think, and, and that's still true to this day, as far as, um, I think that people can be very insensitive to one another and that's mm -hmm. a, a shame in mm -hmm. my opinion. Um, so it was twofold. It was physical. I wanted to, to make sure that I had a life that I could drive normally and cook and do all the things that an average person would. Wow. Um, and I, I'm careful with the term normal because, yeah. you know, what, what really is normal, you right. know, if you think about it. So, um, but with that being said, uh, like I said, it was physical. It was also mental um, mm -hmm. to kind of grow out of that aspect of it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, my dad, owned a local shoe repair store here in Alabama. It's well known. Uh -huh. And uh, he's been doing it well over 30 years. Wow. So it was family run business. And um, with that being said, he had, uh, he's always very, very busy. And mm -hmm. my grandmother was working the front that day. 
And this lady came in and she brought in a shoe for her daughter. And the lady said, I need this shoe lift taken down. Hmm. And my grandmother looked at her like, wait a minute, let me make sure I get the order right. right. You want it decreased? And she said, <laughs> yes. And so that was unheard of, like, especially in the nineties. So um, my grandmother said, okay, well, can you kind of explain to me why? And so the lady began to tell the story about her daughter and limb lengthening surgery. Mm. And my grandmother just kind of went, whoa, <laughs> like, <laughs> this is intense. And she knew, like, my grandmother has a distinct, she, she just knew at that yeah. moment this was, this was groundbreaking. Right. So she ran to the back. And again, she was short like me, so she was moving. <laughs> but uh, she got to the back and she told my dad, she was like, Vic, and his name is Victor too, by the way. Is it really? It is. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> <In this world. laughs> But uh, she said, Vic, she said, um, I need you to come here. This is really important. Mm -hmm. And he said, he called her Vera. He said, Vera, I I'm sorry. I'm busy today. I can't, you know, I've got a lot going on. And she said, Vic, I'm telling you, you need to come out here. Mm -hmm. And the look on her face, he said, was just kind of chilling. Like, this is huge. Yeah. And so she, um, she brought him out there. And lo and behold, he started talking to this lady um, her name was Mims Adams, and uh, he ended up, it turned in like to a dinner with her daughter, and we sat down and talked about limb lengthening surgery, and then my mother being the just wonderfully uh, overly for emphatic, mm -hmm. rather, um, researcher that she is, she got on the internet and uh, dug up as much, and that was dollop internet, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> So all you social media people, <laughs> look that one up. That was fun. Right. Um, <laughs> we get instant gratification now. Yeah. Um, but she dug up as much as she could possibly find. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had like a book, you know, within a week, which is hilarious. Um, but over the course of a year, we really sat down and talked about it as a family. Mm -hmm. um, and my parents were gracious enough to fly me to Baltimore the summer that I turned 14. Okay. And so... Um, when we did that, I met with Dr. Dwar Paley and okay. at Sinai Hospital, mm -hmm. as well as Audra Turner. And I'll mm -hmm. never forget that day. Yeah. Um, there's some things that get muddled over the years, but yeah. that was a day I'll never forget. Wow. And uh, we talked and he showed me what was possible at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind for anybody that's watching, my surgery, since it was so long ago, they used different devices. Mm -hmm. Things were far more complicated than they are now. Uh, medications were involved and it's not anymore, right. um, which is wonderful. I'm mm -hmm. so glad for people nowadays mm -hmm. um, to have that opportunity the way it is. But with that being said, um, I knew sitting there that it was an undertaking that was going to be exponential. Mm -hmm. um, and I started crying and I said, dad, you know, whew, this is, this is a lot. And he <laughs> looked at me and he said, Mariana, you don't have to do this. And I told him, I said, no, I do. Wow. And that was, the, that was the day that I really knew that I had to make a profound decision. Yeah. And so long story short from your question, yeah. um, it was just, uh, it, it's, it's funny how things come full circle in your life. And uh, that was really why I chose to do the surgery. That is one of the most amazing stories I've ever heard. Mariana, that is amazing. <laughs> wow. From, yeah. you know, just, you know, your, your grandmother hearing about the, the story and then going back to tell your dad, your dad, you know, you and your mom, everybody finding out about it and then flying to Baltimore because you're from where? Uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Alabama. So, you know, that's a, that's a flight. That's a trip. And, you know, so your whole family came with you to Baltimore. Uh, actually that particular trip, it was just me and my dad. Okay. 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 So you met Dr. Paley, uh, Audra, she's a, she's an amazing, I think she's a PA, right? Yes. And yeah. She's yeah. She, 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 um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's amazing. I remember she was there for me as well. Um, you know, years later. So, um, so you said that you were gonna, you were predicted to get, um, to grow to like only four or five, but how tall were you? Um, were you at four or five before the surgery? Um, over the years, I did take growth hormone shots. Okay. Uh, it did kind of help a little bit along the way, but it right. was not as, as beneficial as it needed to be. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was definitely not a stranger to pain, but, uh, <laughs> uh, with that being said, um, four or five was fully grown as 14 for girls is pretty much where they close off bone age. Right. Um, and I had kind of met that mark at that point. Okay. Um, so, but yeah, that's, that's where I was at that right there. Okay. Very cool. Wow. And then, um, just to kind of like foreshadow a little bit, cause we will kind of dig through this history of everything a little bit more, but how tall are you right now? 
Um, four eleven. Four eleven. Wow. Here. No, that's that's <laughs> significant. <laughs> that is amazing increase. Six inches. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, it, was, it was intense, but uh, I'm still tiny. But you know what? I determined at that point in time that structurally it was going to make the most sense for me. Yeah. Um, that I was going to be able to do everything I needed to do. Right. I ended up marrying a six foot tall giant, which is. <laughs> So, uh, but you know, it just, it worked out. God has a, a crazy plan for our lives. That's for sure. Yeah. I'll say congratulations on marriage. And uh, I also know you have a little one too. I do. Yeah. And I'm actually, uh, I didn't tell you this, but I am 34 days away from having my second one. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Congratulations. So a, yes. I am quite large. And if I get a little winded, I apologize. No, 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 no. Take any time you need. I really uh, appreciate you coming on in the condition you are. That's, that's amazing. Oh, so <laughs> wow. Congratulations. That's awesome. Well, um, yeah. So, so you were the first quadrilateral patient to have internal lengthening for both the femurs and the tibias and the fibulas at Sinai. Yes. That is, is that correct? correct? Okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of a textbook accomplishment. Pretty cool. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. If you listen to, I believe it was an interview you had with Dr. Paley, because yeah. I was very interested in your channel. Uh -huh. um, he mentions the ISKD rod. And mm. ironically, it's one that has like one of the worst wraps. Like yeah. I said, it's not a thing now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and at the time though, that was like the best of the best. So, right. you know, we didn't have a choice, mm -hmm. but, uh, I selected the ISKD rod, um, internally because at the time I would have gone back to Birmingham to be a sophomore at John Carroll here okay. locally in, okay. in Alabama. Mm -hmm. Um, and I knew that with that, the halo kind of made me a little queasy, um, <laughs> you know, seeing all the things that were going on with it and the people that can rock that kudos, like, <laughs> You guys are my heroes. Um, but there were a lot of complications either way, really. Um, yeah. So to me, I thought, well, let's let's give it a go and see what happens internally here. So Yeah, wow. You So you officially did set history there with being the first one and that sign, I know less. That's amazing. Wow. Um, so so you said that your mom found all that info and stuff like that. She found it through the internet. Did, did you end up, when you went to Baltimore, did you end up talking to any, any other patients who had it done or did you just kind of meet with Dr. Paley and then kind of make the decision. What was your process like? Um, that's a great question. Um, I had talked to um, Rebecca Adams is the young lady that I met in Birmingham that had okay. had surgery. Um, and she'd had a combination of different things going on. So she kind of gave me the whole spill of things. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really talk to very many patients while I was there. Okay. Um, I know now they do kind of allow you to talk to patients and okay. they show you, you know, here are your options and this is how you'll look aesthetically and things like that. Mm -hmm. And again, technology is amazing nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but with that being said, um, it was really just full on with Dr. Paley and Audra and um, just kind of, he would sit down and, and talk about what are your goals and what do you want to see for your life? And he told me what he could do. And because we had such an expedited timeline to get mm. back to Birmingham for school, Nice. Um, that's what made that decision to go ahead and have those rods inserted two weeks apart from one another, which wow. was pretty intense. So. Okay. Wow. So that's, that's pretty much what I was going to ask. Um, and you had it done pretty much two weeks apart. Uh, the, the lengthening, which fem which bones did you have done first? Was it the femurs or the tibias? Uh, or the, the femurs were first. Femurs were first. Okay. That was smooth as glass. I mean, yeah. it was just very simple. Um, you know, it just, I remember going into it and being a little nervous the day of, mm -hmm. um, just because you just, you always are when you go yeah. under the eye, yeah. but, uh, you know, I, I'd mentally prepared myself the day before, um, mm -hmm. my mom and dad took us to the Harbor and we walked around and I thought I need to get some serious steps in right now because <laughs> I'm not going to be walking for a while. Right. Um, because with being two, two weeks apart from one another, I was mm -hmm. going to be fully immobile okay. from the waist down. Yeah. So that was, that was a big decision. Um, yeah. Okay. but yeah, I mean, it was, you know, I had a moment in the stairwell the night before where I just sat there and gave myself a pep talk and thought, this is where you're supposed to be. You know, this is what you're supposed to do. And it's, it's a matter of like visualizing what you want out of your life and how you're going to figure out how to obtain it. Wow. And so I did that. Um, but yeah, the first week was femurs and then two weeks later it was to be a video. Mm -hmm. Now I want to kind of like go a little bit before the first surgery. So you say you sat in the, the, the stairwell and gave yourself a pep talk. 
what was really going through your mind? Because I know, like, I remember being in the gym like a few days before my surgery, looking at myself in the mirror, like, well, this is it. <laughs> Say goodbye. <laughs> you know, and I, I, it's literally like kind of like D Day is coming. And um, a lot of patients kind of have that, you know, they're, some of them are really, really ready. But what was your kind of mindset like? Were you just strong, whole, ready to go? Or, yeah, I just want to kind of tap into that a little bit. I think, um, you know, like you, uh, you, you look and, and you look at yourself and go, okay, well, you know, I might never be the same again. Yeah, exactly. And you're not, but in a great way, you yeah. know, it's, it's something that you can't ever explain unless you've been on the other side. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, I remember sitting there thinking, you know, I'm either about to make the best decision of my life or I'm about to ruin it. And <laughs> I didn't know, um, I knew it was going to be hard and I knew I, I was so determined though, to get my life where I felt like I could just walk into a room and just be, and, and that's all you ever, I think that's all most people really ever want. Absolutely. They want to, um, they just want to, to be themselves and not be judged in a way that's something that people hold against you when they just look at you. Absolutely. Um, and so for me, I was so hardheaded and determined. I was like, I'm just going to power through this. It's going to be great. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You, yeah. At one point, you, you, have, you, you definitely have to get that, like that, 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 you know, over that kind of that anxiety a little bit to be able to get ready for this because it's a strong mindset that you need to get through the process. But at the same time, it's okay to have a little fear um, because it's kind of an unknown. And you had kind of, I, I don't want to say it, but prehistoric technology, you know, the ISKD, <laughs> but, you know, known as the runaway nail, but it's amazing because that was also a non weight bearing nail, correct? Very much so. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, Mariana. So you could even put your weight down or anything like that. So, so day of the surgery, you have the surgery, you wake up, after the femurs are being done, was did the surgery go smoothly? Uh, very smooth the first round. Um, didn't have any issues and complications. Okay. Uh, praise God. But it we, I think after you know a couple of days when you start to come out of it, you know yeah. back then medication was really utilized a lot. Uh, <laughs> a lot of narcotics were used back then. Um, and it, like I said, the femurs were just, I think with everybody, the femurs seem to be very smooth. Yeah. Um, it's uh -huh. when you start getting down low to the tibia area that it, just, it goes kind of chaos, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so how did that one go? Did that, that was same thing. It's pretty, pretty smooth. It was like, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. That one was, uh, I know we're going to get into complications later, so I'll probably yeah. get into that deeper, but, okay. um, it, it did not go well. It did um, not go okay. All right. The <laughs> surgery went well. Um, and, and at that time, because of how they had to do things, yeah. uh, surgeries were like 14 to 16 hours. They weren't like two or three, you know, hours you're in, you're out, you, yeah. you know, you recover. I know some people are even talking like an hour nowadays, but, yeah. um, back then they were long. Are so you you're talking, your parents were sitting home with a beeper across the street at the Hackerman Pat's house waiting, right. you know, just for whatever's going to happen. Um, granted you're a patient. So they say Come <laughs> backwards, you know, from 10 and, within two seconds you're knocked out and then they wake you up what seems like five minutes later. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> it never seemed real, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was definitely different. And the second one was kind of a nightmare once I woke up and everything started to settle. So to okay. Speak. After that, yeah, the body kind of starts to kind of, uh, you know, recover a little bit, but yeah, definitely the tibias are a little harder. Now, can you discuss like, um, uh, you know, when you started the distraction, the lengthening phase started, usually that starts like about a week after the surgery, correct? Um, what was the lengthening like for using the ISKD, ISKD? Because we know that the internal nail is like the precise, you have the magnetic lengthening ERC to do that. You had to do some sort of ratcheting or twisting, correct? To kind of get the lengthening? Talk, yeah. us, talk, us, talk to us about that. Um, it, that was, that was gruesome. Uh, <laughs> if you imagine, um, well, I mean, the, you know, intense, like break your bone and yeah. then try to rotate it. Like that's a great idea. <laughs> 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 you know, I, it being the dinosaur, I don't knock it because it works. Yeah. Um, but it was very difficult. Uh, it was, you didn't necessarily, when you're just sitting there, you didn't feel the pain of right. the, the fact that you were broken. Um, mm -hmm. but once you start moving it, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not pretty. Uh, there was a lot of days where I would put a sock in the mouth just to keep from screaming. Wow. Um, but it, at that time, based on any of the devices that were out, whether mm -hmm. it was a halo um, or an ISKD rod, mm -hmm. the other people that were in the Hackerman Pat's house, um, which was fairly new at that time, mm -hmm. 
they you would hear people it sounded like a horror house like you just hear screaming <laughs> randomly like it smelled like chicken soup and it, it sounded like cream so you know it was it was intense so it was very it was a lot for for people that lived there <laughs> right wow so you actually stayed at the hackerman pats for the duration of the, the whole lengthening phase yeah uh the whole lengthening phase which was uh roughly about three months, three months uh, yeah. I was delayed one extra week mm. um, just due to, a, like, a, I think a pre-consolidation at that time. Okay. Um, but after that, everything else was back in Birmingham. So Wow. Wow. That's crazy, Mariana. That, oh, my gosh. So um, did you feel the actual device when you made the turns? Like, was there a clicking mechanism? Like, I want to kind of... Basically, so imagine, like, when I say a rotation, if you... Mm-hmm when it started out with the femurs, yeah. um, you're physically rotating your leg. Right. And a lot of times, you know, being 15, I wasn't really able to do that mm-hmm. cognitively and know what to expect. Right. So my parents had to help me a lot of the times. Yeah. Um, the femurs went, like I said, really easy. Yeah. But when we got to the tibia area, oh my gosh. Um, it's like juggling the invisible. Yeah. You don't have anything to, to physically, you have to isolate. Say, for example, imagine you've got two pole changes to receive up at the top of the femur, but only Mm -hmm. one left in the tibia Mm -hmm. area. Right. You know, how do you isolate that? So there were different ways you'd have to hold your legs and stuff like that in order to get it to really. To work. Yeah. And that's actually, that's exactly what I was trying to get at because, you know, having both done at the same time, if you rotated the femurs, obviously your legs are connected. And I was just like, how do you, you know, isolate, but I guess holding your legs and kind of, you know, uh, holding it down a little bit, then it kind of, you can make that turn a little bit. Okay. Very cool. So, Towards the end of your lengthening, obviously, you know, the muscles are going to get super tight doing quadrilateral lengthening. Um, can you tell us about like what type of like tautness and tightness you got in your muscles? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I, I forgot to mention too, the, the way that you do, you would measure now, um, yeah. the device physically, if I'm not mistaken, it's a magnet, correct? That yeah. rotates the device for you now. Mm-hmm. Uh, back then it was a box. It looked like a remote like this wow. and you would stick it. You would have like a little box drawn on the side of your leg, like yes. SpongeBob or something and stick <laughs> it. You know, they tried to be creative and uh, they would stick it to the side of your skin mm. and it would tell you magnetically whether or not you got a pole change. Oh. Um, so it would tell you how many rotations, but that sucker beat every four hours yeah. for forever. It was insane. It was, wow. it was very intense. And you had to keep a manual log of them to make sure you, Got it is supposed to be one millimeter a day per rod. So that oh. was two millimeters, one at the bottom and one at the top for each yes. leg for me at the time. Wow. So you were doing two millimeters per day. Yeah, it yeah. was a <laughs> lot. Um, but uh but yeah, so like I said, it was just uh it was intense for mm-hmm. sure. No yeah. Doubt. So I, I, I'm, I guess that like, you know, lengthening that rate, obviously the muscles that are all interconnected, like your hamstrings had to get like really tight, didn't they? Hamstrings uh, got to be the worst. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't really have any quad pain, thankfully. Okay. Um, the gastroc muscle got, it, oh, it yeah, got there for a while. <laughs> yeah. But definitively hamstrings, you know, right behind the knee was always mm-hmm. you know, a sore point, um, especially towards inches four through six. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. my knee started to kind of come up at an angle. Um, I think it was at about a 45 degree angle. Okay. which led to drop foot, like ball- ballerina foot is what they call it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so that, that presented its own issues. Yeah. Too. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, and that's kind of what I want to kind of get into right now is like complications. And you just said like right there, one of them was like drop foot being that I actually got a little, almost a case of that as well. My Dr. Conway was like, all right, go ahead. Let's see it. Let's see it happen. And I was like, nope. So I worked that, worked that away. But so you said that you got really tight there. Was there any other complications that you had along the way? Yeah, there were, there were a few, um, I, and I'm, I'm probably scaring, I'm thinking about the people that are watching this and I'm probably oh, scaring the hot stuff out of them. But again, this is a dinosaur, so just bear with me. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, uh, let's see. So we had, I had a bout of, um, let's see, it was pre-consolidation that happened towards the end okay. um, on the right leg. And what happened was we were in the middle of trying to get pole rotations one day. Um, and unfortunately for my mother, she was trying so hard and it hurt, you know, you didn't, didn't want to do it. Mm. Um, but past the point of resistance, it was just literally re-breaking my leg. Mm. We had no idea. Um, Mm. so that resulted into a, um, another surgery. Mm. Um, and then I ended up having muscle contracture, Mm -hmm. um, which was the tightening of the muscles to where it led to ballerina foot or drop foot. 
Yeah. Uh, with that particular situation, um, they ended up deciding to put in, there were screws about that long. Mm-hmm. Um, and they would go in from the bottom of my hill mm-hmm. and it would connect at like a 90, well, about a 45 degree angle to keep me at a 90 degree angle from my foot. Oh yeah. So those were in there several months. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you don't have the opportunity to put pressure on that foot, mm-hmm. the arch starts to kind of disform. It was, it was kind of crazy, but they would, my feet started arching really, really bad. Wow. Um, so I had that happen. Um, and then lastly, the, the biggest one, yeah. Um, was the fact that like the, the second surgery that I was telling you previously yeah. with the tibia and all that good stuff that was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, when I finally kind of came to nurses knew from me that I have a really high pain tolerance. <laughs> um, but when I got from like, they say like a one out of a 10 is your yeah. pain still got to like a 90 out of a 10. <laughs> wow. like, oh, something's wrong. Like this yeah. is bad. Um, so they ended up rushing in and stopping a surgery that Dr. Standard was in at the time. Yeah. Um, and he came in and he evaluated what was going on and he was like, Oh no, she's got to go to emergency surgery. You need to rush her in now. Um, and it turned out that I had compartment syndrome. Oh my goodness. So it was, it was very scary and they didn't really expect that. So it's not, Mm -hmm. it's not anybody's fault, but, um, from that lesson, they mm-hmm. learned that the next patient that was going to do it two weeks apart from another, yeah. which happened a couple of weeks down the road, um, they knew to cut that muscle to kind of let it, you know, because you have all that. It, it's basically pressure of mm-hmm. internal bleeding, and you have to kind of release that. So mm-hmm. it was intense. Yeah, yeah, I'll say, <laughs> Mariana, that's crazy. So you had, yeah, getting a fasciotomy like for the those muscles in front of the tibia, like a lot of times, especially doing quadrilateral lengthening, I think that definitely added to it. Um, getting super tight there. That's insane. How much length did you get on, because you got six inches overall, how much length did you get on each segment? Uh, let's see, it was three for each femur and then three tibia for the area. Okay, okay, gotcha, right. Um, now, your, your nails obviously weren't weight-bearing, so you were completely kind of like, you know, I guess, uh, uh, was it paraplegic you know? <laughs> <laughs> for months? <laughs> So how did you end up, you know, managing mobility and getting around? Was it all crutches, walker? Uh, did somebody help lift you? What was the process like for that? It was, it was intense. Yeah. Um, for the, when you, I think was in any circumstance, when you go under anesthesia, it mm-hmm. kind of wipes your body out. Yeah. Um, so you could become weak all of a sudden, even if you were strong, you become weak. Right. At least that's what it felt like every time. Cause I, I think I had a, a total of maybe 14 surgeries between mm putting the rods in, taking them out, putting screws in. I mean, you know, it, they added up eventually. Right. Um, but because of that and the medication that I was on, I mm-hmm. lost probably 44 pounds in two months, which is wow. very unhealthy. Yeah. Um, so soaking wet, I was probably 77 pounds, which was <laughs> oh um, so my little brother at the time, he's four years younger than me. He probably, let's see if I was 15, you know, 11. So um, he was able to pick me up. I mean, that wow. was, that was intense. So, yeah. During the distraction phase, my mom and dad, my dad went back to work back mm-hmm. in Birmingham. So it was just mom and my brother, Philip. And um, he was primarily like the man of the house. Yes. And so um, he was able to pick me up and he would get me to and fro in the car if I needed, if we had to go somewhere. We pretty much stayed at the Hackerman Pat's house as much as possible. Um, and then, uh, but he would transfer me into my wheelchair. Um, my mom was capable. I mean, she's a little bitty, she's a skinny lady, but, uh, <laughs> but she's very strong, she? um, but they were able to do those transfers. And I mean, it was, it was intense. I mean, you're talking, you know, apart from upper body strength to be able to transfer, um, there was really not much mobility going on. Mm. Uh, the wheelchair they started me out in was pretty much a lounge chair on wheels. <laughs> it was <laughs> like, they didn't want you to bend your legs back then. Yeah. Um, once I got back to Birmingham, uh, and being in school, I was able to be in more of a 90 degree angle, which okay. was good that I could do that. Cause it made me more mobile at school. Right. Um, however, it was also kind of negative too, because you're literally just kind of collapsed all day long, mm-hmm. making those muscles get tighter and tighter. Cause you're just sedentary, you know? Yeah. Um, but eventually I did graduate from the wheelchair mm-hmm. to a walker. And then from a walker to crutches and then crutches to full weight bearing. Full weight bearing. Wow. That is a process. Just to think nowadays of like 
you know, how blessed everybody who's getting lemon thing is. They have the, the internal stride now. They can just pretty much walk from day one, you okay. know, straight to the crushes. And then you had literally months and months and months of nothing. And then finally to go to the walker and then to cry. Oh my gosh. I'll wow. tell you what, it was, uh, it was nine months of immobility. Oh my gosh. And I just, it, what was funny is when I got back to physical therapy, there was, they, they basically they put a, like a weight belt around you. Yeah kind of learn how to stand up and mm -hmm. then kind of move around mm -hmm. well at the time lady could hold me up by my britches basically <laughs> so she, you know i'm like okay that's a little painful but <laughs> but there was a day that she was kind of preoccupied my yeah. pt and she had to kind of like transition really fast mm -hmm. so she said hey and she called like the lady's name i think it was lee yeah. she said come here real quick i need you to hold her just for a second well yeah. lee wasn't really sure what was going on and she was just barely holding on to me and yeah. My, my PT's name was, uh, is Beth. Mm -hmm. he, uh, Beth looked up and she was like, you're standing up by yourself right now. <laughs> like, oh, wow. that's crazy. And so within three days, I was yeah. already like moving. I was ready. You were ready to start weight bearing. I was ready. Like I just mentally, I probably wasn't as, um, I was capable of it. But mentally, I was like, I, I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I need to walk. I need, I to, walk. need to get out of this. This is right. crazy. Yeah, it's like I've been down for too long. Oh, my gosh, that's so crazy. But yeah, I, I remember, you know, and again, you know, as long as the bone is like healed enough, I guess they, you know, they're okay with it. But it's also the patient is like, how comfortable are they tolerating that, you know? Uh, it was, it was uh, definitely a decision. Um, once the bone had consolidated and you could see that thickening on mm -hmm. the x-rays, mm -hmm. that was huge. Taking out the screws in my ankles to like allow my arches to start to fall back again. Right. Um, that was the very painful to try to stand on those because you're standing on arches, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, but I, I'll be honest, when that surgery was taking place, yeah, my childhood orthopedic surgeon he was not a fan. He wasn't a fan. Not of a fan. It. There was a lot of people that weren't. A lot of people right. in my family, mm -hmm. um, because it, it's intense. I mean, back then especially, it yeah. was an intense process, and they mm -hmm. thought, well, you're fine. What do yeah. you need to do that for? You know, right. and it was. You know, so that was a, it was a lot, a huge undertaking. But once they finally kind of let me loose um, to, to be weight bearing, yeah, yeah, I went full throttle. So. Yeah, full throttle. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, everybody around you, your support network probably accepted a little bit more because, you know, they probably saw the change in demeanor of like how happy you were, you know, afterwards, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm six inches taller, you know, I'm, walk I'm back to walking and stuff like that. That's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's cool. Like, uh, I'm sure you've had this where you kind of like look down, you mm -hmm. know, and you're like, whoa, like that's, that's different. Like, I'm yeah. like <laughs> and for being a mobile for so long, you, you see it from a, a length this mm -hmm. way, but you don't see it vertically. Right. Um, but for the very first time when I was actually able to stand up, yeah. uh, I, I stood up for my mom and my dad, of course, but the very first person uh, was my grandfather and he was a Marine. Wow. Um, and he just, it just big tears. Just Wow. Him. That's so cool. So, That's yeah, so cool. You know, cool. man, you had a, you had an amazing support network. I mean, from, you know, little bro, you know, helping you out, getting around your mom, your dad supporting you and that, you know, your grandpa, your whole family. That's, that's what you really need. I think for something like this, especially, you know, doing what you did and what, what you went through, it's incredibly uh, difficult. Now, Mariana, I just want to talk a little bit about like the physical therapy. Um, Cause we, we briefly mentioned a little bit, but like how often did you end up going to physical therapy sessions? Uh, in Baltimore, <clears throat> let's see, it was roughly every other day. Okay. Um, and, you know, again, it was kind of like the horror scene. You would hear people <laughs> kind of, <laughs> you know. Um, but in Baltimore, I also had aquatic therapy, too. Uh, okay. They had this really cool tank uh, that you could get into. And, boy, they would chalk the mess out of that water with chlorine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had quite a few bathing suits that were very pale <laughs> by the time I was <laughs> I'm sure that was healthy. Um, but, uh, but back when I returned to Birmingham, um, it was more, you're kind of on your own, you know, the mm. physical therapist group that my dad selected was, uh, Beth was extremely open to listening and, and being open to what he had to say. And he was very, uh, defensive. He wanted to make sure, Hey, you know, this is what we've been receiving. This is what we expect. And she showed nothing but the best. Wow. Um, and I'm sure she was probably scared to death. I, I wouldn't blame <laughs> yeah. her because it's right. like, I'm dealing with this broken child that can barely move mm -hmm. and I've got to get her back walking. Like that's intense. That is. Um, 
but uh, I saw her every single day after school okay. uh, for two hours a day, roughly, mm-hmm. and started off with heat packs, which was huge mm-hmm. um, as far as kind of letting those muscles relax and especially being in 90 degrees all day long in a wheelchair. Um, and then the stretching would begin. <laughs> oh my gosh, the torture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was some Easton involved, you know, with the, the electrical magnets and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was intense. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I definitely, I know physical therapy and, you know, for me, I felt it was painful, but for you, it had to be a whole nother level. Did they end up, did Beth any, end up using any other type of treatment modalities? Like, um, I don't know if they had it back in, but like ACE them where they use like a plastic kind of a uh, device where they kind of like rub the muscles to break up the scar tissue or did she end uh, up stretching? A little bit, not not so much. Okay. Um, more than anything, I think that was like the the method for getting my arches to come back to to be. Yeah. And you know, it probably would feel amazing now, like a foot massage. But back then, <laughs> it was like, oh, like please stop. <laughs> this is awful. <awesome." laughs> but uh, I mean, she she definitely she. Uh, we're, we're still great friends now. We exchange oh, Christmas cool. cards and um, we both have children, which is pretty cool, but yeah. it's, uh, she changed my life for sure. That's awesome. Well, congratulations for having Beth, you know, cause she seems like she's an awesome physical therapist. Now, did you end up doing like, like you said, you did it pretty much every day. Was that five days a week or did you, um, did you end up doing anything on the weekend? Did you kind of just take that time to kind of relax a little bit? Um, my mom is more of a drill sergeant, so not really. Um, <laughs> my dad was a little bit more relaxed cause he, he kind of, even though he wanted to make sure I'd, I'd received the best, he wanted to, he was, you know, I'm a dad's girl, you know how that is. Yeah. Um, but uh, with my mom, she wanted to make sure that, you know, I was just on top of it. And mm-hmm. she was an incredible coach with that. Um, we had some braces that Anil, he's in charge of PT back in Baltimore, and mm-hmm. he's still there actually. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's basically what they do is they cast the upper thigh mm-hmm. and then they cast the lower shin area Mm -hmm. um and they cut the brace in half and then where you would see a bracket that would go like arch this way he reversed it so it was almost like a hyper extension um which was incredible so you slip the brace on Mm -hmm. and then you wrap in uh exercise bands Mm -hmm. and it would literally force your leg to go like this Mm. so highly very 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 painful yeah Um, i would she they would encourage me to sit and watch television and and sit there as long as I possibly could take it, which was not very long some days. Um, but the brace helped tremendously. Um, I also had a bone graft machine that I'd have to stimulate, um, Mm -hmm. an area on my right shin. Yeah. Um, but like I said, my mom was my coach and she would, we had a long hallway in our house and she'd be like, all right, get up and walk. Let's go. (laughs) You know, and if it hadn't have been for her and my dad and my brother, I mean, you know, you get to a point, especially as a teenager, you're like, oh, I just don't want to be bothered anymore. <laughs> exhausted. Yes, exactly. It's just so exhausting. It really is. And, you know, that's so amazing that your mom was on top of it like that and, you know, helping you out because it's super important to keep it going. Because once you wear it down, it's like that's when the problems start to creep up because they're just waiting for an opportunity. And, you know, by you having that support team around you, uh, they made sure that you didn't slip up at all. That's awesome. Now, you know, you kind of mentioned a little bit, you know, earlier about the pain, obviously. Um, but I want to kind of talk about like sleeping at night or just kind of sitting there, not necessarily using the brace because we know that would be painful. But like, let's say you were, you were in the wheelchair for hours. Were your legs ever kind of like throbbing with pain or did they kind of just like after you were kind of settled, they kind of like fade away? What was it like for the pain? Uh, I'd say it was mostly achy, um, okay. that, for lack of a better term. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but I mean, you know, it, it, uh, it mostly stiff, I guess, would probably be the best way to okay. put it. Um, yeah. But sleeping was... <laughs> I'm a stomach sleeper already, which yeah. is bad, especially now, like being pregnant right this minute is, <laughs> is very difficult for me because I'm, I'm like in a lazy boy right now, just trying to sleep at night. Um, but uh, with that being said, being a stomach sleeper and being on a ton of medication like that, yeah. um, I kind of fought some insomnia, but I had more pillows than anybody <laughs> could really, like, <laughs> truly admit to. Like, I had over 12 pillows. Wow. It was, it was, it was intense. Yeah. Um, but you kind of strategically go, okay, well, this one's good here, that one's good there. And once you kind of get, you know, in a place, it's like, but yeah, it was, it was a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember like, kind of like playing Legos with the pillows. It's like, you know, you, you know, we're exactly where they need to be. It's like, nope, this one doesn't be. <laughs> exactly. Very cool. Um, so Marianne, I want to kind of like, fast forward a little bit to the consolidate or, you know, we're going through your journey, like the consolidation phase, like once you started walking, you know, weight bearing is one of the best forms to uh, stimulate bone uh, uh, regenerate. Um, 
how often did Dr. Paley, did, did you, how often did, first of all, did you go back and see him? And then did he give you the say, hey, you're clear to start kind of putting weight on those bones and kind of walking, taking steps? What was that, that all about? Um, basically, I would go, let's see. So I started off in Baltimore. I was there for roughly three months living there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I finally did come home, uh, majority of the x-rays and things that we would have to send back and forth okay. um, were done locally. Mm-hmm. Um, and x-rays were very difficult to get just yeah. because being about 77 pounds, there's no, there's no anything really protecting right. your bones. Like you just mm-hmm. kind of felt like you're exposed. But, um, with that being said, um, they would only, un- unless there was like an emergency situation, you didn't have to go back right away. Mm-hmm. Um, and we really didn't have that. Thank goodness. But towards the end, as they start seeing, okay, well, it's starting to consolidate and, mm-hmm. you know, getting that information, they would fly me back and okay. go, okay, now you have a checkup with him. Um, and he would release me and then I would start, you know, therapy and everything. Okay. And then after that, it was like, all right, let's start taking rods out and this out. And so yeah. gradually it was, it was a lot of up and down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back, back and forth. forth. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. And how, how long, um, let's say after you were uh, done lengthening and like the consolidation, did Dr. Paley say that, hey, look, you can get your rods out? Like, and which ones came out first? Um, they actually, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong because it's, it's a little blurry. I apologize. Yeah. You know, um, it's been a long time. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, I would say um, probably if I had to guess, I believe it was the femurs first. Okay. Um, I, I know the, the screws in my ankles came out first. Okay. And yeah. then the next surgery would have been femurs and then mm-hmm. tibia would follow. Tibia's after that. Um, okay. But it seemed like it was, once they started taking everything out, it seemed like a very quick process. It yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Let's just, let's keep pulling everything out and we're right. going to, we're going to go with it. So. <laughs> And did you feel any different after the devices came out? Did you notice anything? I mean, obviously you were walking out, your arches are starting to kind of like level and, you know, standardize. But did you feel anything like in terms of like, I don't want to say lighter, like in the bones, but like just different, you know, with everything coming out of you? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, I don't think, I, I felt a little bit like, uh, I mean, it was definitely easier to get through the airport. <laughs> um, even though I was on a list, they were like, we've got side. <laughs> Um, but, uh, it, it seemed like it, it was definitely a little bit lighter. Um, okay. I definitely didn't shock myself every time I went to my locker, right. um, <laughs> just from the buildup of electricity. But, uh, I would say that I was a little nervous at that time because you did hear some horror stories. Like somebody would step off a curb and break mm-hmm. a leg and you're like, Oh God, you know, it's like, please don't <laughs> happen. You know, I've been through so much already, but, um, yeah, a little bit lighter. I'd okay. Say. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now, I do want to kind of like talk about your physicality. Before the surgery, were you involved in any type of like sports? Were you an athlete of any type? Oh, big time. Where um, are you? <laughs> uh, I played soccer basically my whole life. Okay. Um, uh, I only stopped briefly. And that was one, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. um, when you went to the gym that day and kind of thought, okay, here yeah. we go. Um, I thought that was something that I was going to have to give up for good. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was really the only thing I've ever been just naturally talented at, which okay. I, I loved it, every bit of it. Um, but I ended up coming back and playing uh, intramurals in college, which okay. was pretty impressive. My parents even came to the game, which was so, you know, it's like the most lame game ever. <laughs> there, you know, and they're like, she's on the field, woo! you know, like it was, it was great. Um, so, uh, but I played soccer my whole life. Um, I grew up in a giant Italian Catholic family. Mm-hmm. So uh, ironically, there were 11 grandkids on one side and four on the other, all boys. Wow. So I didn't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> I was just pretty much like I could hit a baseball at three. Um, that's just kind of what was expected. And it wasn't until later in life, uh, my aunt had a little girl. Um, and when she finally did, it was like, oh, this is great. But we were, we're both very tough, needless to say. Right, right. Um, <laughs> But uh, I ended up, I went to the University of Alabama and got a degree in kinesiology. Awesome. And um, I interned with the strength and conditioning staff uh, mm-hmm. under like Nick Saban's group and Coach Diltz and just a bunch of amazing, incredible athletes. Um, so roll time for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there would definitely be. But, uh, but yeah, I ended up, uh, I got my degree with kinesiology, became a personal trainer, and now I have a a whole different business that's it incorporates the bone lengthening aspect as well. So absolutely, I'll definitely love to highlight that uh, towards the end. Um, 
to talk about that. Now, where you're, you, I want to talk about like, because obviously you did quadrilateral length and you're getting maximum length, six inches of a lot for the legs. I want to talk about proportions because a lot of patients who are going for stature lengthening, um, they're always worried about proportions. I'm, I'm sure you've probably seen some of my videos. What was it like for you? Um, obviously, you said that you had that condition where the, the femurs were really short. So obviously, this helped those. What about the tibias and then the overall leg length towards the end compared to your body? Um, it was it was kind of uh, with being pseudochondroplasia. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's a, t a touch of dwarfism, basically. Mm -hmm. So all your features, again, normal. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's going to be what an average human would look like. Mm -hmm. um, but with that being said, you know, that was a concern of mine, mm -hmm. but once they had stretched me and, and you kind of get over the fact, cause back then, you know, you wanted to make sure both legs ended up the same length, right? That's kind of a risk. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I stretched enough. And like Dr. Paley says, your number changes, you mm -hmm. know, you think five, four and you're going to stop. Yeah. And I could have kept going. I totally could have. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the height that I had achieved, I knew that if I continued, mm -hmm. then aesthetically my arms would have needed the surgery. Okay. I really want to do that. Uh, you know, I think it's yeah. the rule is hands in pockets or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I was like, yeah, I think, I think I'm good. <laughs> I think I'm going to stop. <laughs> okay, very cool. So it didn't bother you too much um, with the proportions and stuff like that. And, uh, and you obviously said that your family was very happy to see the whole turnout and everything like that towards the end. What about your friends and like kind of the, the network just outside of the close family? Oh, man. Um, I, I, I couldn't have had a better network. And I, I think that is so huge in any circumstance, any from dinosaur to now, <laughs> uh, it's huge, uh, family specifically. Um, and I preach that like to the patients that I talk to now that mm -hmm. are really concerned about it. I also look at the parent yeah. and, and what's funny cause, cause now I am a parent. Right. Um, and I look at them and I see that, that like glimmer. Yeah. And when you ask them and you acknowledge it, they kind of tear up and you, they go, God, you know, I've never, nobody's ever really asked me anything. Um, but, uh, you know, people don't think to, to look at the family or the friends in, mm -hmm. in that respect. And I had great friends, one of my lifelong friends, um, she's also expecting right now. And, uh, she's been there through thick and thin. I mean, first time I ever took a, a shower standing up, mm -hmm. she was like on the other side, like, you cool, you good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, she was in the, uh, delivery room when I had my first child, which was pretty cool too. Cause she's a nurse. Okay. Um, so like, you know, those friends, they're lifelong. Mm -hmm. Um, you find a few people, like I had one girl that ran me into a locker, which was not fun because she wasn't paying attention while I was on oh. my wheelchair. But apart from that, you know, that's, that's <laughs> oh, it's kind of funny, really, in my opinion. Thank God I didn't get hurt. Um, <laughs> but yeah, friends are huge, but I say family more than anything. Uh, if you're an individual that's just going through bone lengthening, you know, a lot of people take it on solo mm -hmm. and that's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're talking about a patient that's pediatric, mm -hmm. um, I, I always say, you know, look at the whole dynamic, Absolutely. Um, especially like I said, my brother, he was 11 at the time. That was a lot to take on. Absolutely. I mean, he's, he's my champion in the sense that, I mean, he had to grow up. He didn't mm -hmm. have a choice. You mm -hmm. know, he had to be big man at the time. And um, it wasn't for lack of my dad not trying. He had to keep his business running, you know, so, um, but parents go through so much with you mm -hmm. and your siblings or your spouse or whatever your circumstances are, mm -hmm. um, that I think is a dynamic. It's really important to approach it and look at that in the psychological aspect of it, um, to really, you know, iron out those details. Cause there's things that there's days that you have bad days and, and they need to know that and understand it's not against them. And mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just, it's a lot, it's a yeah. lot for everybody. Absolutely. And I, I love that perspective because a lot of people don't even, you know, I think that we as patients, we owe it, we owe it to those around us to kind of like, you know, bring them into it because they are our loved ones. They care about us. So we can't like, you know, again, like, like you said, I, I completely understand those who go about it solo, but if they do have somebody in their life, like it's okay to like, Hey, look, I trust you with this. This is the secret I want to keep, but I just want to have you there as my support network along the way, you know, because it's important. I mean and it's, it's huge. You're absolutely right. And, and from a pediatric standpoint, you know, mm -hmm. the sacrifices that people make yeah. to get you to do that is yeah. unreal. Right. I mean, I can't ever put into words how appreciative I am to my parents, absolutely. And my brother, even to, for all the things that they did, that they gave up, 
mm-hmm. you know, that time and the energy and the money that went into it. I mean, yeah. thankfully back then, a lot of it was covered by insurance. And mm-hmm. Now I don't believe it is covered. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. But I mean, they made, they made severe sacrifices and I, like I said, I can never be more appreciative. So <laughs> I'm appreciative for your family. Hat off to your family. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> Oh, they're cool. I'm telling you, man, they're good. They're good. <laughs> Very cool. Well, that highlights the then. So, Marianne, I want to talk about the now. I want to kind of like fast forward to where we are now. So how things are now, obviously, you're 15 years, uh, just over 15 years, right, past the surgery. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about like, you know, how you're feeling now in your legs. Do you feel any type of lingering pain or stiffness or anything that you re- that would remind you of the surgery is like, you just kind of have a new life now? I tell you what, um, you know, that's the the cool part of this that I was so excited to share with people mm-hmm. because even though I did have a dinosaur device that was known for lots of problems, uh, which I did have quite a few, um, I can honestly say 15 years down the road with gray hair that, um, you know, my life is, is tremendous. Um, I don't have hardly any pain, to mm-hmm. be quite honest. Mm-hmm. A rainy day, you know, I can feel the weather's coming. Um, <laughs> but uh, but beyond that, I think a really great pair of orthotics is huge mm-hmm. um, to kind of keep in check, you know, to keep yourself in alignment as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, a good chiropractor on hand is huge as well. Uh, but staying physically fit is very important in my life. Um, you know, most people aren't yogis, but <laughs> if you can find some time, you know, in a good video to, to really hack at it and stretch a ton, that's really important. Um, but it's not hard to be active when you have a three-year-old, so right. <laughs> it's intense. Um, I will say as an adult, um, I'm, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but I'm 34 days away from having my second little boy. That is um, so- yeah. So I apologize. <laughs> I'm a little bit more filled out than I normally am. But, um, with that being said, uh, that was also an experience for me that I didn't think that I was going to have the opportunity to have. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, you know, it's when you're under five feet, C-section mm-hmm. is pretty natural, mm-hmm. um, like the first go-to. Um, and thank God I have amazing doctors that are always very, like, Johnny on the spot. Um, and thankfully, I didn't have any trouble with my first one. So hopefully, number two will be the same way. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, that was intense. And I think with my stature, what was most important is a chiropractor to keep yeah. my back in check. Right. Um, you know, just to make sure everything was in alignment, but it's, yeah. it's been incredible. I'm, I'm so, um, overwhelmed. If I could go back and talk to that kid yeah. that was, you know, sitting in that stairwell yeah. and say, you have no idea mm-hmm. how good things are going to be. I think that would have, you know, everybody wishes that. So mm-hmm. it would have been incredible. Sure. Wow. That, that hits home right there. I love that kind of foreshadowing and then kind of going back the flashback and talking to yourself. Like I, I had that same type of experience. It's like, you need to go through with this. It's going to change your life for the better. And I'm so glad that you, you had that realization that like this did work out. Okay. You worked hard. Your family worked hard for you and now everything's, you know, looking up and now you're able to provide for your family and bring, you know, the future generation in, in a, a positive way. That's awesome. Now, are you able to like, kind of like, you know, talk about athleticism. Are you able to do things like, you know, run or do type of like, I mean, obviously you have a three-year-old, so running after them, I'm sure. Um, but tell us a little bit about that, like the agility and like kind of like moving around. Like. For sure. Um, that's like the Olympics someday. <laughs> <laughs> you never knew you could move so fast when you have a three-year-old, um, especially a boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What's funny too is uh, my children, I say it plural because the other one's fixing to be here, but yeah. uh, thankfully anatomy wise, they didn't get a touch of anything. And I, I thank the lucky stars and my Sasquatch of a husband who's <laughs> um, that they didn't get anything of that, which is amazing. But uh, with that being said, um, generally when I'm not expecting, uh, I like to do a lot of high intensity training okay. uh, where it's not so much the impact that I'm looking at, right. but for me, the staying in shape and, and keeping a, a decent weight for my frame is really mm-hmm. important. Um, so high intensity training to kind of burn those calories off quickly, but right. yet not, you know, just pelt, you know, endurance running and things like that. That's where you kind of start going. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've done a 5k did really well with that. Um, and I, I'm planning on doing another one if I can <laughs> manage. Um, but, uh, you know, those, those kind of things are a little bit more, um, like brute force. So mm-hmm. that kind of does take a toll. Okay. Um, but, uh, being on like an elliptical machine is fantastic mm-hmm. aquatic therapy of any type. Um, and, uh, a lot of stretching for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think that, you know, the stretching kind of like, 
yeah, you, you could, a lot of people ask, do you have to continue it for the rest of your life? And I could tell them like, you don't have to, but at the same time, it helps. It just kind of like helps you. I mean, stretching helps you just in general. So, for sure. um, you know, I always recommend that. Um, and then since you had, you know, uh, this surgery so long ago, uh, I want to kind of talk about like, would you recommend it, you know, to other patients who are in the same type of, um, who had pseudochondroplasia, stuff like, you know, the condition that you had? Absolutely. Um, I would say it's a phenomenal question. Mm -hmm. um, from my perspective, would I do it again? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Even if I had to go with a dinosaur device and every problem that I had, wow. I would still go back and do it um, mm -hmm. because it, it opened doors that I couldn't foresee. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just, it changed, changed my life truly. Um, but for each, I think it, it's circumstantial really. Yeah. Um, each individual has their own challenges and all I can say is, is, you know, before you do something like this and you take this on, uh, do the research, do the legwork, no pun intended, um, do everything that they recommend for you to do, get all the answers, talk to people on social media, um, seek out videos, amazing ones like yours oh, that you. can that give you answers that didn't exist. Like right. I said, the nineties had no information, mm -hmm. um, but do some soul searching too, okay. because it's, it's, it is a uh, guy. There's no, there's really, I'm, I'm speechless really because mm -hmm. there are no words once you make that decision. It is a journey. It is. Um, and it's not for the faint of heart. Um, mm -hmm. But if you can do it and you want to do it, I totally, I recommend it hundred percent. Wow. Sure. I love that. And that's the same type of positive uh, feedback that I always tell people. It's like, you know what, it, for my own experience, it was just so positive. I'm an advocate for it. I'm not pushing anybody or promoting it. I'm just sharing experiences so that they can highlight and see what the possibilities they could Absolutely. have, you know, and that's what I'm trying to do. So that's awesome that you, you have that same perspective. Very cool, Mariana. Now you mentioned you had a three-year-old boy. That's, you know, super cool. How, like you mentioned this a little bit earlier, you have being a parent and having perspective for your children. Um, I've spoken to other parents of, of, for, you know, who are undergoing stature lengthening and they've told me that it's incredibly hard um, to do that. Do you have, a few tips of advice to these parents, um, you know, for, you know, any, any tips of advice you can give them for their kids who are undergoing stature lengthening? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I would say uh, as uh, twofold, mm -hmm. um, as a patient, I would say I would recommend them talking to their child, really talking to them. Okay. Um, a lot of kids are misunderstood, mm -hmm. especially if they get picked on at school and, those conversations are essential mm -hmm. for that child to be able to have the most positive life that they can. Um, a lot of times when I was a kid, if I had a bad day at school, it came home yeah. and cause I knew I couldn't act out at school. Mm -hmm. So therefore I acted out at home and my brother took a lot of it and God bless him. He just, he didn't deserve that. You know, that's, that's huge. And, um, but I would say um, be open to communicating with that child um, also look for signs, you know, that you might need to even seek counseling as a whole. Um, because there are a lot of times that there's residue that you can't quite explain. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I mean by that for me specifically, um, I felt like there were relationships in my life that could have been different. Um, whether that was personal or family even, um, and you don't see it. And, and, and as simple as this story that I was fixing to tell you mm -hmm. is, it, it, it really kind of changed gears on me. Um, one time headed back to Tuscaloosa, mm -hmm. um, I stopped uh, before I got to campus and like stopped at Subway. Yeah. And I'm standing there and I'm ordering. And I had always as a kid, you have this thing where it's like people are staring, mm -hmm. you know? And when I was a child, it was inevitable. It was not like kind of like, oh, they glance, you know, they stared. Right. Um, <clears throat> it makes you very self-conscious. So I still had that residue in the back of my head yeah. and I didn't realize it. Yeah. But I had this person that kept this guy, he kept staring at me. And I'm thinking, you know, here we go. Like, and immediately you just kind of stiffen up and you mm -hmm. bristle mm -hmm. and the defense wall comes up. Mm -hmm. And I just stood there and I thought, okay, well, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And so eventually he did make his way over there and he asked me, he said, are you a personal trainer? And I went, <laughs> like, whoa. And I just immediately, I came down and I was like, oh my gosh. Like, 
he was not staring at me like in a bad way. Like I was thinking it was something bad. Right. And um, here he is, is being nice and complimentary, not creepy. Thank God. which was Because <laughs> nice, um, you do get some of those. But, um, but I mean, and that's when it kind of dawned on me. It was like, wow, there's, there's something still here and yeah. I can't quite put my finger on. Um, and I think, you know, being in college, it was like what, 21 when that happened, mm-hmm. that was years later. So mm-hmm. it was like, you know, I think that that's really important to kind of activate that, um, and make sure that there's no residue. Yeah. Um, even if you're flying so low with it, you know, you think there is an aspect of like a dysphoria that goes away. Right. Um, that you feel just unstoppable that you can do anything in life. Like I'm going to jump off the roof. Woo-hoo! Like, don't do that. That's a terrible idea. Um, but I mean, you go through those motions, but there's still occasionally there's still something there mm-hmm. and you definitely want to try to attack that. So from a patient perspective, attack that. Mm-hmm. Um, as a parent though, I see now the sacrifices that were made. Mm-hmm. I see looking at my child you see somebody who's so innocent and they, they come into the world with no inhibitions, like nothing. They're just, just there. They're happy and things are wonderful. And you want that for your child. And I think as a parent, you would move mountains for your kid. Yeah. Um, so in that respect, do your research, talk mm-hmm. to your child, make sure it's the right decision if you're choosing to do that for your family. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, yeah, if my son, if either one of my sons needed it, the chance to have to do that, I would totally be on board in the sense of let's do the research, just like my dad did and my mom. Let's fly there. Let's talk about it. Let's mm-hmm. see what our options are and do the the groundwork. Now, you know, they have nutritionists that they start you off with and you're on vitamins and things that they didn't do back then. Yeah. Um, so as a parent, yeah, I think you just, you know, you would move mountains for your child. So yeah, I think that is twofold for sure. That was amazing advice to, you know, parents who are having this uh, stature lengthening for their kids, because I love the twofold approach, the patient perspective, and then now the parent perspective. Very cool, Mariana. Uh, well, Mariana, we answered the then, the now, and now I want to go to the really the now, the present. Um, I want to talk about like what type of things you're involved in. At the beginning, you mentioned that you were, you majored in kinesiology and it kind of helped you, you know, pick your career path and your business line. Your dad had a uh, shoe lift company for over 30 years, which is incredible. Um, so if you don't mind telling us a little bit about that and how limb lengthening also impacted that career choice. i tell you what, um, I never, when I graduated, I never would have foreseen working with my dad because yeah. family <laughs> is interesting at best. Um, <laughs> But uh, there was something that just clicked Yeah. Um, with after you have surgery like that. And I'm sure with you, you're mm-hmm. doing it through this incredible channel, mm-hmm. um, which whoever's out there and they're watching, please watch his videos. I mean, as many as you can, because they're incredibly informative. Um, he's not paying me to say this I <laughs> no. because I truly in my heart believe it. And with lack of research back then, now it's huge. Wow. Um, but in your, it, with your journey, this is what you've done to, to create this pattern to help somebody else. Right. You're not doing this for yourself. You're doing this for that patient, for that mm-hmm. person that you were however many years ago when you had your surgery. Absolutely. Um, and that's what I found for me. I needed that. It, it's not really closure, but it's something that is a drive in me that said, I'm not done with this. Mm-hmm. I need to continue to help people. Um, find this feeling. I mean, this is just a euphoric feeling really. Um, But with that being said, he had continued along the path. Uh, He became a certified podorthist Mm -hmm. uh, roughly 16 years ago. So he makes custom orthotics, but we, we knew there was something more Mm -hmm. that we needed to tap into. And so we talked about it and he'd been doing shoe lists for forever. I mean, he's very well known here in town. Mm -hmm. Um, He has massive following. His work is uncanny. Like he, (laughs) He focuses really on structurally sound and aesthetically pleasing orthotics. Wow. I mean, excuse me, uh, shoe lifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that being said, though, um, it started growing exponentially. Mm-hmm. Then COVID hit, and it was like all these things just factored in. It was like these people want to come and visit you and be here, but they can't. They're in these tiny little towns. It's not affordable. You know, they're hitting up local cobblers that have some, some have great experience and some not so much. Right. Um, or you have these expensive companies that are just asking ridiculous prices. And I'm sure you've been there and you know that. Yeah. Um, 
But, you know, that's why we, we chose to do this. We wanted an online platform where people from anywhere in the world could contact us. Yeah. And I mean, we're getting orders from everywhere. It's, we've done thousands of orders and I can honestly say, let's see, I talked to Singapore last week. It was what? like three in the morning. Yeah, it was pretty cool. International orders. Yeah, we're oh, getting wow. them all over. Oh, um, so it's, it's just been a huge blessing. And, you know, customer service is also kind of a dying art form as well as yeah. custom shoe lifts. Because yeah. um, there's an artistry involved. Um, but with that being said, it's like we wanted to ensure that that, that process, you, you get that person on the phone and you mm-hmm. listen to that story. Mm-hmm. That's, that's their story. That's what makes them, you know, who they are and, and people want to be heard, you know, yeah. why not? <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, so we, we try to put all those elements together. We created this online platform and, uh, the results have been tremendous. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been so rewarding to talk to people who are limb length thing patients to talk to people who are just, you know, LLD patients. It didn't mm-hmm. matter, you know, whoever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, we recently had an order from a guy, uh, I believe in Virginia mm-hmm. and uh, I won't say his name, but he's on my website. Um, but he was, he's an athlete and he had very, he was very, very specific in what he wanted. Yeah. And he told us and he, we had video chats with him and we talked to him and really honed in on what it was he was wanting. And by the time he wrote his review yeah. of when he got back, it was like, that's why we do this. You know, <laughs> we want to make people happy and, you know, nobody wants to be stared at. Nobody wants to have that feeling of, being different, you know, right. not for a, a ill anything, you know right. what I'm saying? Like that's nothing, there's nothing wrong with having one leg shorter than the other. Yeah. Um, but we wanted people to feel like they, they just were unique because they were unique. Yeah. And so, you know, our patients truly matter. And that's, that feeling is just each day when I'm on the phone talking to people, I just, I'm like, this is, this is it. This is the life, you know, this is amazing. <laughs> so yeah. I, I just, I can feel your passion exuding from the business that you're working in now. And it just, that's exactly, it aligns exactly with like the type of mission that I'm on here with this whole YouTube channel, trying to spread awareness and help people. And you're doing it through your, your uh, talents and abilities with your dad and working uh, with that business. Now I want to kind of get the, you said online platform. I want to kind of get some information and kind of like share with everybody. Cause we have a ton of limb length discrepancy patients who watch uh, stature lengthening patients, um, patients with dwarfism. We have a lot of patients, Mariana. So if you don't mind sharing like the, the name of the brand website, social media handles, I'll make sure to post all of that. Well, I certainly appreciate that. Um, it is Shoe Lift Express, okay. uh, www.shoeliftexpress.com, uh, simple enough. Um, <laughs> we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, things like that. Okay. Uh, check out our gallery. That's where, you know, you can really see the artistry um, that's behind it. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we hire somebody, we bring them in and we check those qualifications. Like yeah. we want to see that, you know, you know, why, why this is the way it is, mm-hmm. your gait pattern and things like that that have to be factored in. Wow. It's not just let's put some material on a shoe and slap it together and see what happens. You know, we want to make sure these patients are really getting what they need. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, with that being said, um, yeah, we have a, a really incredible staff right now. Um, mm-hmm. So we're so blessed to have that. Um, but yeah, check us out. And if you, if you want to contact me and you just want to chat for just the heck of it, um, I'm available as well. I'm on Facebook. Um, but yeah, any, anytime we can help people, that's, that's where we're at. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, I will say this too, you know, uh, coming on to here and even mentioning that is a huge honor. So thank you for that. Um, anybody that can still do a shoe lift, I say this because I never want to step on somebody's toes. Mm -hmm. Um, anybody that can still do that and and do it really well, that I applaud you because that is such an artistry and I'm learning it. I'm I'm taking that on next. That's my next venture for my own process right. um but people that can do that just blow my mind so mm-hmm. my hat's off to you mm-hmm. uh when you're looking for a lift look for something that's really going to be supportive and do what it needs to do for you even if that's not our company we want to make sure people are just really reaching out to to get the best resource that they can get so right that's off it's yeah awesome. no no definitely i believe it's it's a really rare talent to be able to do that and do it well but i love your whole brand i mean you being the face of the brand that that, that alone your story can impact so many lives just you and the, the customer service you know what i mean like that alone right there talking to somebody like you and just getting the nitty gritty of what that patient needs, the t- tailoring it to them is so important. Not just saying you need a two inch lift and you're on your way. You're saying, why do you need a two inch lift? You know, let's hear the story. It's kind of like a, 
like a mom and pop shop, you know, and I love that. So everybody make sure you go check out shoeliftexpress.com and, uh, you know, reach out to Mariana. She'll be happy to hear your story and help you out with any shoe lifts and uh, anything that you need in that, <clears throat> in that manner. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow, Mariana, this has been an amazing interview. Thank you so much for coming on. I just want to uh, kind of get one last take on, do you have any final words for anybody kind of like watching you want to kind of give them any type of advice from your perspective as a lung lung patient? Wow, man. Um, I, I can honestly say, uh, you know, it's funny. I called my dad right before uh, this interview mm -hmm. and I talked to him and I said, any, any last words of wisdom that you can give me to impart? And he said, I think it's most important that you act like you're talking to yourself when mm -hmm. you were 10. And I thought, wow, you know, like I couldn't have heard anything more poignant. Like that was just incredible. Um, so for those that are out there, just know that you're not alone. Yeah. Um, it, there are moments in your life that seem just absolutely overwhelming, um, but there's always hope and there's always resources and, and things to, to look at. Um, just keep your chin up and charge the mountain, you know, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Your mindset, your, your, your story, your, your perspective, and most importantly, your passion. Uh, Mariana, thank you so much for coming on to share your story. I know everybody's going to love this story. Um, I'm going to try to get it out as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, everyone, uh, that is Mariana from shoeliftexpress.com for coming on and sharing her quadrilateral limb lengthening story from over 15 years ago. Thanks so much for coming on, Mariana. Thank you so much for having me. You got it. Wow, what an amazing story Mariana just shared with us. I mean, having to go through so much during her limiting journey, yet end up with no long-term problems, and even starting a family of her own with a three-year-old boy, and another one on the way in just over a month, it's truly inspiring. I mean, not only that, but she continuously merges her passion for limb lengthening and, you know, propels her thriving shoe lift business forward. What an incredible way to give back to the procedure that changed her life. If you're interested in reaching out to Mariana to have a custom shoe lift made for either a discrepancy, to boost your stature, whatever, you can see all of her contact information in the show notes. Until next time, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out.